Okay, hello everyone. So, as I mentioned in the course introduction, today we are starting with some prerequisites. And in particular, we are starting talking a little bit about simplicial homotopy theory. Uh, because if I understand, most of you don't know what a simplicial set is. And uh, they're kind of a combinatorial tool that's very useful to model homotopy types. And the first, the first half of this introduction will be a justification of the sentence I just made. And the second half will be using simplicial methods to, to actually define homotopy limits and co-limits and show how they work. So, okay, so we start with the following object. Start with the following category, delta, which is the category of um, finite non-empty totally ordered sets or finite non-empty posets. And the typical object here is of the form brackets n, which is this, which is slightly confusingly, but you'll see why in a moment it's called like that, the finite totally ordered non-empty set with n plus one elements. So, oh, and I didn't say it, but n monotone maps, of course. Increasing, no, non-decreasing maps, sorry. So for example, there is zero, which is just a singleton, does brackets one, which is this guy. And uh, well, let me put also brackets two. This guy here. And there are maps between these objects. And actually, let me mention a bunch of them. Uh, for example, there is the map that I'm going to call S from n to 0, uh, which does uh, what it has to do, since S i to 0 for every i. Uh, okay. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Something funny yes, happened. Yes, we can. Can you can you see my 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 tablet? Yes. Okay. Because uh, I can't. Yeah, but uh, uh, we can't uh, see you. We hear you, but at least I don't see you. You are totally black. Yeah, my computer has done something very weird. Um, okay, let's hope. It's, um, it's still working. Okay, um, everything seems to have, uh, let's see, can you see me now? No. Well, okay, you will have to hear me, but if okay. I move the tablet, you can see the tablet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you can hear me, perfect. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, sorry, I don't know what, what the issue is. Uh, yeah. Uh, Okay, so we have this map, the, the constant map is going to call a degeneracy. And then there are going to be maps that I'm going to call di from n minus one to n for uh, zero less or equal than i less or equal than n. That's basically sending dij to j for j less than i and j plus one for j greater or equal than i. So it's identifying brackets n minus one with a simplicial subset obtained by removing the i-th point. And just for completeness sake, you also have these guys here um, called the degeneracy maps. So these are called the face maps. Makes sense in one second why I'm calling them this. 
but let me put all the definitions here. Sij is j for j less or equal than i and j minus one for j greater or equal than i plus one. And these, in order to make sense, we need uh, zero less or equal than i less or equal than n again. And this is essentially taking two points and collapsing them. So these things come from a, these, these names. These are also called the generacy maps. These names come from a geometric perspective because we have a functor from delta to topological spaces. Oh, and let me mention it now for once and for all, when I say topological spaces, I mean compactly generated topological spaces. As in algebraic topology too, we don't want to worry with, about crappy topological spaces. Let's consider only reasonable ones. Um, okay, we have a functor that sends n to what I'm going to call the topological n simplex, and I'll denote with bars delta n. And what is this? This is just the set of T0, Tn in R n plus one, such that Ti's are all non-negative and their sum is one. And more generally, if you want, if you have an object here, you're going to set it to this guy. Oof. Yeah, let me call it S. So I don't T S S S in R S. But if every object is other from brackets n, so this is just a fancier way of saying things. And how is the functoriality working? Well, if I have a map f from n to m, uh, I can send f of t0 tn to the sums uh, t uh, i uh, wait no sorry uh, that's not correct that's uh, well to let me call them t prime zero, t prime m, and that's just, sorry, t prime i is tj if, uh, sorry, no, 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 sorry, that was, that was correct. What I was writing was perfectly correct. I just got confused because I wasn't thinking about, um, Some of these, some of these sums might be empty, in which case they're just a zero. Sorry, I was getting confused by that. It's correct. So concretely, what it means. So okay, well, this is just a point. The geometric zero simplex, and this is just one simplex, indeed. You might have, if you take an algebraic topology one, you might remember these guys from the definition of singular homology. Um, you can take delta two and you see, well, I'm, I'm not very good at 3D that drawings, but you have these guys here. And this is the point um, one zero zero, this is the point zero zero one, this is zero one zero. So in fact, practically this is just the convex envelope of the basis vectors. And the face maps, the di from this guy to this one are exactly the inclusion of the faces. Hence the name faces, face maps. Uh, so this is all very geometric. Um, okay. 
Uh, <clears throat> and the degeneracy maps correspond to projections. You're collapsing two vertices together and you extend them up linearly. So for example, this S map from the topological and simplex here is just a, well, this is a point. So that's just a, a constant map at a point. Okay. Why am I doing all this? Well, one second. It's time to give the first important definition. So a simplicial set is a functor x from delta up. So it's contravariant to sets. Actually, I need to go to a new page. And I need to give you at least one important example. And you'll see why this definition now makes sense. Uh, so if X is a topological space, sing X is the simplicial set that sends brackets N to home in top. So the set of continuous maps from the topological and simplex to X. And that's actually the example that I want you to keep in mind for a simplicial set. It's not the most general, but okay. And the slogan is sing X knows all about the homotopy type. of X. And so given this, given this example, we inspired by this example, we'll often refer to X of bracket zero as the set of points in X. And X brackets one as the set of paths in X. More generally, X brackets N is the set of n simplices. Hopefully, uh, given this example in sing x, the sing x bracket zero is literally the set of points of the topological space x, and sing, sing x brackets one is literally the, the set of paths. So, um, so this makes sense. And for example, you can probably see how from these you can define the singular homology of a simplicial set. If you remember the definition you've seen in, uh, in algebraic topology one, seeing X knows all that you need to define a singular homology. So for example, you can define a chain complex whose nth term is the free abelian group on X and, and, and face maps given by some minus one I delta I. This shouldn't be a surprising notion. And so for example, so X sees the homology, and then we'll see quickly how X sees also all the homotopy, actually, all the higher homotopy. So, so seeing X really knows everything. But let me give you some more examples of simplicial sets before we move on. 
or should I give the geometric realization first? No, let me give more examples first. So, another example is suppose C is a category. Uh, then we define its nerve as the simplicial set as n to the set of functors from n seen as a poset into C. So for example, is the set of objects in C. And C1 is the set of arrows in C, etc. Oh, well, let me give you another one, sorry. Is the set of pairs of composable arrows in C etc. And uh, uh, some of you took the Algebra K theory class last semester, you might have seen this already and seen that this is in fact a fully faithful embedding of categories into simplicial sets. But uh, we're not really going to use this. But, but the reason why I'm giving this example, decided it's going to be helpful in a couple of lectures, uh, is that allows me to define delta n as a simplicial set, which is the nerve of brackets n seen as a poset. So concretely, this is telling you that delta n sends m to the set of monotone maps from brackets n to brackets n. And I want to think of this delta n as the analog of the topological n simplex that I discussed before. Oh. Uh, in fact, it's zero simplices are exactly the vertices of the topological n simplex. Uh, it's one simplices are exactly the, the faces, the, the, the one dimensional faces, the, the, what's the name, edges of the topological and synthesis and so on and so forth. And this guy comes with some important simplicial subsets. Okay, I haven't defined what a simplicial subset is, but essentially you, you give a subset for each X brackets N in a way that's closed under the maps. So for example, its boundary, we can think of it as union of delta i, delta n of every face for all i. And concretely, this is uh, sending m to the set of all maps that factors to a subset. So f is not surjective. So for example, you can think of the boundary of delta zero is empty because uh, every map to a one point set is subjective. And the boundary of delta one is the union of two points. It's, it's isomorphic to the union of two delta zeros. Because every map that's not subjective, either, either it's the constant map at zero or the constant map at one and nothing else. OK. OK, that's one important example. And let me give another important example, and then I'll stop for questions. So for every i, you can take also the, you can take also the horn which is the union of 
delta i delta n for every i different than j. The, all the faces, uh, ooh, delta j. All the faces except the i. And concretely, this means those f only instead of being subjective, the image of f does not contain the set zero uh, um, the, the, the subset that's obtained by by brackets and by removing the i vertex. That would be like the image of the i face, and we don't want that in the image of f. Um, if we copy it again. Um, and so, for example, uh, lambda two one is something I need to draw like this. It contains only the the face opposed to the second vertex and the face opposed to the zeroth vertex, but not the face opposed to the one vertex. One vertex. And lambda two zero instead is uh, this guy. It contains the face opposed to the first vertex and the face opposed to the second vertex, but not the face opposed to the zeroth vertex. And you can enjoy yourself and draw higher dimensional things if you're able to. Uh, let me just try, I don't know, lambda 3, 1. Uh, so we have 1, 2, 3. So I contain, uh, let me do actually lambda 3, 0, because that's easier to, to, to draw. So it contains this face, contains this face, and this face, but not the face opposed to zero. And that's why it's called a whore somehow. OK. Very good. Let me pause for one second and ask if you have questions. I guess that you, uh, I have a question. I guess that you can make the statements in the parentheses uh, precise uh, by writing them as appropriate co-limits of those. Yes, yes, okay. yes, yes. Indeed, indeed, I haven't explained, but in fact, it makes sense to take the union of two simplicial subsets uh, by taking the smallest simplicial uh, subset containing both of them, and then those statements are actually precise. And you are right that those are actually can actually be written as collimates. Okay. Other questions? And is it true that the um, that the category delta is a model for the category of um, simplices in top? Uh, it depends on what you mean by a model. I mean, we are declaring it to be a model if you want. It's definitely not a fully faithful embedding. That it is. Because a, you're, taking, you're taking only linear maps. Equivalence um, for the right category of simplicial, uh, for the right category of uh, simplices on top. I mean, I would say yes, but it's kind of tautological again, we are, because we are sort of declaring it to be and see that the theory works out fine. Uh, rather than having some deep reason to expect it. Thank you. OK. Let me state now a proposition that usually is like the very first thing people tell you about simplicial sets, but I postpone it until relatively late for one reason, because I actually think it's less important than, than people usually make it to be, but we are going to need it. So we have a functor sing from top to simplicial sets, and this has a left adjoint. Which is called geometric realization. Uh, which has the form. Okay, concretely, this means that all homes of simplicial sets 
from uh, x to sing y are the same thing as continuous maps from the geometric realization of x of y. And I can actually give you an explicit formula for this geometric realization. And this geometric realization of x is obtained by taking the disjoint union over all objects n in delta of a copy of the topological n simplex for every n simplex of x. And then I'm quotienting out by a certain equivalence relation, see, which says that for every f from n to m, every map in delta, and every x in x m and every t in the topological n simplex. Uh, am I going to get this confused? F upper star of x comma t is x comma f of t. So for those of you that are categorically minded, this is secretly a co-end, but I'm not going to mention the word co-end ever again. Um, so uh, I don't, I mean, there are some advantages of thinking very categorically, but I don't think this is one case of that. And so for example, the geometricalization of delta n is, well, the geometricalization of delta n. You can actually see that this works in the way that it works. And then these preserves co-limits because it's a left adjoint. So for example, uh, the geometricalization of the boundary of delta n is exactly the union of the faces of the proper, sorry, of the proper faces in delta n. So for example, this is this guy, but uh, without anything inside here. Uh, this first fact, it's easy and boring. Uh, I'll, let, I'll let you to you if you want to verify it. And actually the formula is not really that important, honestly. If you think about something that sends delta n to this topological n simplex that I was mentioning and glues things properly, that's the intuition you should have. Um, but maybe I should say a few words about the proof of this adjunction statement. Um, so we have, well, this is a lot easier with, co with ends and co-ends. Of course, this is a one-line proof if you know what an end and a co-end are, but let me be precise. So what is a, a, what is a map? X to sing. Why? Well, it is a natural transformation. So it is something that sends X brackets N. So for every here, this is sent to some sigma X from delta N into from topological and simplex to Y. And in such a way that for every F uh, from n to m. So we have the pullback of sigma x is the composition. So, so for every x in, let me put an m here. Consistency. Uh, we have this guy, sigma x, and I precompose it. F here and here is sigma of f of x. And that commutes. That's the condition of being a natural transformation, f up as star. So. so concretely, what is something that gives me a map from x brackets m to so concretely this is the same thing as 
exactly a map from this guy that respects the equivalence relation I wrote. And that's this condition here. That's respecting the equivalence relation. If you write it down what it means. So that's the same thing exactly as a map from the geometricalization of X into Y. And that's the proof. And again, sorry, I'm being a bit fast in these, in these uh, preliminary sections because I don't want to spend a lot of time doing the technicalities, but please interrupt me if, if uh, there are problems. Is it clear? Okay. Good. Good. For the sake of giving concrete examples, let me check one thing. So let's examine the geometricalization of delta one times delta one. So what are the simplices? Of delta one times delta one. Well, they are pairs of maps. F from N to one, G from N to one. So concretely, you can think of them as strings of zeros and ones. So you can think of this as zero, 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 and then at some point it goes one, and then another one, zero, zero, I don't know, one, one. If you write like the values of f in order. And the degeneracy is just doubling one symbol. So we want to, so I guess the claim I want to make is that delta one cross delta one is the union of two, two simplices along, uh, along a certain one simplex. So let me draw what I mean. So what are the vertices of delta one times delta one? They're pairs, so we, there are four of them. And what are the one simplices that are, well, as it turns out, there are five of them, of the non-degenerate ones. Then there are also the constant ones that I'm not drawing for simplicity sake. But there are also two simplices. And this is the two simplex. So for example, sorry, just to, this is uh, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. This one simplex here. And this simplex here is 0, 1, 0, 1. And this is 0, 1, 1, 1, etc. And the two simplices, the two, two simplices are uh, zero, zero, one, zero, one, one, and zero, one, one, comma, zero, zero, one. Uh, and you can see that they're not degenerate because the degeneracy is just doubling the same object twice, and you cannot obtain these from any lower dimensional guy. Uh, well, for example, 0, 0, 001, 0, 0, 001 is just 
the zeroth degeneracy of zero one comma zero one. So I'm not going to draw it because it's degeneracy. But there are two non-degenerate simplex, which is surprising at first because delta one in delta one, uh, all two simplices are degenerate, as you can easily verify. But in uh, when you take the product, two non-degenerate simplices pop out magically, even if uh, both of their components are degenerate. And if you want this, if you want this corresponds to the fact that the projections sends these to, to degenerate guys, the two projections. And then I think I'll let you to verify the claim and see that in fact, every higher simplex factors through one of these to two simplices. Every higher simplex factors through one of those two simplices. And their intersection is exactly the, the, the this, uh, 0, 1, comma, 0, 1. So you actually have this push out. And so brackets delta 1 times brackets delta 1 is exactly a two square, a two dimensional square. Uh, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I think you have to be careful with that last claim because there could be simplices which are just generated like one point. They're still contained in one of these two simplices. Oh, Maybe right. not in, I'm not saying exactly one. Oh, right, okay, okay, sorry. I'm saying one. In fact, I'm, saying it's a, I'm not saying it's a disjoint union, I'm saying it's a push out. Okay? All right, thanks, sorry. Okay, and in fact, we can rewrite this as, Bracket delta n times delta, oh, sorry, delta one times delta one, mapping to the geometricalization of delta one. Geometricalization of delta one is a homeomorphism. <sighs> okay, we have still, we are halfway through. Okay. Good. Okay, and this is a special case of the following proposition, uh, which does need that we're working in compactly generated spaces for it to be true, but I'm, I am, and I'll never mention it again. So X, Y, simply shall sets the map geometric product. The product of materialization is a homeomorphism. This is perhaps uh, not very essential, but it is useful to have around. And Okay, and then I'm going to sketch the proof. Sketch of the proof is a reduction to X delta M, Y delta N, and then doing a combinatoric argument that uh, similar to the one I did earlier, but I don't want to spell out in detail because it's a bit annoying, but I'll explain how you reduce to this case. Okay, so let's assume first y is delta n. And let's prove it that for every x, this statement is true. So let us consider the poset of simplicial subsets of X A such that this map 
így zárkomra morfizni. Uh, this is non-empty because you can just take any non-degenerate simplex and uh, this lives in here. And uh, by Zorn's lemma, this has a maximal element. A. And here you need to use the fact that both sides commute with co-limits. Because if you have a chain, you can write it as an increasing union of simple shell subsets. And then you can move the co-limit outside. And here is where I'm using the fact that we're working in compactly generated spaces. Uh, we are using our uh, top spaces RCG to show uh, Lengths where delta n commutes with co limits. But that's a minor point, but okay, just for the sake of being precise. So let uh, A such a maximal element. Uh, then let if A is x, we won. Yay, hey, that was easy. Uh, but if A is uh, not X, we can find a simplex sigma from delta M into X, not in A, of minimal, actually let me call it, oof. of minimal dimension. Um, and this has to be non-degenerate, because if it were degenerate, it would be the degeneracy of something of smaller dimension. Sigma has to be non-degenerate. Uh, otherwise, it would be in A. Oh, it would not be minimal. So we can take A prime, which is A union over the boundary of delta M along sigma. So it's the simplicial subset containing A and sigma. Uh, but then using the fact that oh, cannot believe I already ran out of space. Um, using the fact that um, these and these commute with co-limits, commute with pushouts, we get a contradiction. Because this is saying that A prime is also in this poset, but this contradicts the maximality of A. Okay. And then uh, I need to find a better way to deal with this. Okay. Then uh, 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 to 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 prove it for a general. Excuse me. Could you quickly go back? I uh, missed the last line. Thanks. This is a very standard kind of argument in simplicial sets. You want to prove something for a big guy. You know how to prove it for simplices. You take the maximal subcomplex for which the thing is true and you show that you can add one single simplex. And, uh, well. and you're done. And just to quickly say in word, um, in words, the case of a general to reduce, to prove it for a general y, you fix x 
and consider the poset of b in y such that uh, x times b goes to is a homeomorphism and proceed as before. And again, I'm not going to do the case of two simplices that just direct combinatoric arguments, as in the case of delta one times delta one. Uh, if you're curious, the details are in Gabriel uh, Zisman um, theorem 3.1. It's a book about, it's the title is, let's see, Calculus of Fractions and Homotopy Theory. You have to you consider a combinatorics of a set of paths from 0, 0 to nm, etc., etc. And I mean, the, actually, this is kind of the sort of argument that you use to prove uh, how I know, singular cohomology interacts with, uh, with products. You need to sell the compositions of delta n times delta m. And that's exactly the same kind of argument. But you probably haven't seen it because everyone always skips it because the combinatorics is slightly annoying to write down. <laughs> Hence, I'm giving you a reference. Okay, that's a good moment to pause because I'm going to introduce scan complexes next. And I want to be sure that everything is all right so far. Could you maybe explain again um, how we used um, that we are in complete? Compactly generated topological Sure. Spaces. So the, the, the fact we're using here is that if Z is a compactly generated topological space, you have this functor product. And remember, this product is not the standard product with the top product topology, it's the product in compactly generated topological spaces. This has a left adjoint which is mapped uh, Z blank, again, with uh, compact generated topology generated by the compact open topology. And so it commutes with co-limits. In particular, I'm using that if you have a push out like this, this is the push out. This. But then we use it only for Z equals the um, standard N simplex, and is this not on? Yeah. Well, so first of all, you use it for a general X for the general. Okay, yes, you're right. But the point is that even if you take two compactly generated topological spaces and you take the product with the product topology, that is not necessarily compactly generated. So the, 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 the general statement would be that, so this guy who is compactly generated is maps to this guy, which is not compactly generated in general. And this take the compact generation and this is a homeomorphism. If you weren't working in compact generated spaces, we always have to be careful about this kind of behavior, which they don't want to be. Yeah, the fact I'm, I'm still a little bit confused is because we, this adjunction uh, above you use this adjunction and for uh, Z equal the standard N simplex, this adjunction uh, should still exist on top. Yes, but I'm also using it for, for the geometrization of X here. Okay. Thanks. Okay. But again, I don't want to, to, to insist too much on that. I am trying to be honest with you and motivate every statement I, I, I say, but I don't want to spend too much time on the technicality of simplicial sets because they're kind of beside the point. I just want you to have some kind of to be somehow comfortable with manipulating them. Uh, okay, further questions?
Excuse me, uh, could you maybe explain a little bit why this is the compact generation of uh, the product and not the compactly generated product in the last statement? Oh, that's the same thing as the compactly generated product. Sorry. Oh, okay, thanks. <laughs> I mean, that's how the, the product in compactly generated spaces is, 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 is constructed because this, this bracket CG is the left adjoint of the inclusion. It's the, sorry, the right adjoint of the inclusion of spaces in, in compact generated so spaces into spaces. That's the co-localization, but okay. Um, this, this way we can quickly get in category theoretic esoteric. And, uh, it pays off to be a bit comfortable with them, but on some level there beside the point. Okay, now, uh, okay, are we ready to go further? Okay, so the next goal is to define homotopy groups. But for doing this, we need to ask something more of x. x, a generic simplicial set, is not going to be enough to define its homotopy groups. OK, I'm kind of lying. You can sort of rig a definition, but let's, uh, let's uh, well, OK. It will be clear in a second why it's better to, to, to ask something more of X. So for example, let's define pi zero of X. Ideally, you want to take X zero, the set of points and quotient out by, 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 by the relation x is equivalent to y if there's a path from x to y. But i.e. there exists gamma in x. Oh, sorry. Sometimes I, I write x um, lower n to denote the value of x at brackets n. That's standard notation, I'm trying not to use it right now, but okay, there is gamma such that the, the, the one face is x and the zeroth face is y. Remember the ith face is the face obtained by removing uh, the ith vertex. So the source is the one face and the, and the target is the zeroth face. Okay, that's the definition we want, but we have a problem. This guy is not an equivalence relation in general. And you can see, for example, for x equals delta one, zero, uh, zero is equivalent to one because there is the, the canonical one simplex that goes from zero to one, but one doesn't go to zero. There is nothing going in the opposite direction. There's some kind of directness. And that's unpleasant. That we don't want this. We would like paths to be able to go forward and backward. And for example, you can see what the problem is if you try to prove associative uh, transitivity. So suppose you have gamma, a path going from X to Y and delta, a path going from Y to Z. You can build it up into a map from Delta one union delta zero delta one, which is this lambda two one to x that I described before. 
and we would really, really like to build something from X to Z. So what we would really like is to fill these to a two simplex that will tell us what the path is. But this is not possible in general. For example, you could take X lambda to one and it's clear that you cannot do that. Okay, so in order to do that, we put a definition. So X simplicial set is a can complex if for every N, for every I, and for every map from this horn into X. Remember, uh, lambda and I is the union of all the faces except for the ith one. There exists an extension F tilde from delta N into X. Uh, Okay, and it's clear how these, for example, in the case N2 and I1, this fixes uh, the problem. So let me give an, oh, already out of space. Yeah. I'm copying the definition. Uh, let me give an example. Let Y be a topological space. then sing y is a can complex. So that's good. In a sense, can complexes, we should think of them as simplicial sets that behave like sing of something. So it's good that sing of something is indeed a can complex. So that's a proof. Well, a map lambda and i into sing y is the same thing as a map from the geometricalization into y. And our goal is to extend it to delta n into y, continuous map. But the inclusion lambda n y inside delta n has a retraction. For example, sending the ith vertex um, what I mean sorry no not the ith vertex the very center of the ith face to the ith vertex and extending linearly And let me draw it so it's clear what I mean. So this is the, the, the horn that this blue piece here is the rest of the simplex. And what this map is doing is just uh, projecting upstairs in a straight fashion. You can write it in formulas if you want, but I'm not sure if it's going to be clearer than drawing this thing. So you have a map delta n to lambda n on topological spaces that retracts. 
شو بدي اعمل؟ اف and we just define this extension of f tilde as the f composed with the retraction. And if you think about it, this is literally how we define the composition of paths in algebraic topology two or one, depending on which year you took it. Uh, you pre-compose by this map and then you restrict it to the simplex of zero two. Okay. Good. Mm. I don't think I'm going to be able to define homotopy groups today, but I want to at least give you uh, examples. Or maybe I will be able to define homotopy groups. We'll see. Uh, so, oh, a remark. If X is a Kahn complex. The relation tilde on X zero we defined above is an equivalence relation. And I think I just gave you the proof of transitivity, in fact. And for the proof of symmetry, for example, if you have a path from uh, x to y, and you want to construct a path from y to x. This is a map from the to 0 to x, and then you can just extend it to delta 2. And you get a path from y to x. And sorry, with this equal, I mean that uh, the, the, the constant path, this sy that I defined at the very beginning of today. S up a star of Y, I guess, to be precise. Okay. Is it clear? Okay. Let me give more examples of, uh, of, uh, let me see, a X. Uh, this is a symmetry. And transitivity is as before, you take a map path from X to Y, a path from Y to Z, you extend to Delta two and you get a path from X to Z. Let me give more examples of can complexes though. So take X, Y topological spaces. And here enough, in, in fact, we can take it as ugly as you like. Don't need to be compactly generated here technically for this story to work. You can define map x comma y as the simplicial set and goes to continuous maps from x times delta n into y. And notice that here points are exactly uh, continuous maps and paths are homotopies. So there's the intuition that homotopies are paths in some space. Here we can make it precise. Now, it's true that if X and Y are compactly generated, this is literally sing of the mapping space. But the, the fun part of this is that this uh, makes sense even when uh, X and Y are not compactly generated and you still get a, a meaningful object. And for example, pi zero, oh, sorry, let me say it. Map X comma Y is a can complex. That exercise. And this might or may not end up in the exercise sheet actually. I haven't decided yet, but it's, it's, it's an easy exercise. And so, for example, you see that pi note of map X, Y is exactly the set of homotopy classes of maps. So the notion that homotopy classes of maps are pi zero of the mapping space 
is perfectly rigorous and perfectly precise, even for super ugly spaces. You just need to define the mapping space as a can complex and not as a topological space. And on this topic, I want to give you a, a slightly similar example uh, that shows actually the power of this thing. Because this was kind of a stupid example because for compactly generated spaces, it's just a sing of something. So you don't really need can complexes to make these, but okay. Let's MN smooth manifolds now. And you can define M, M, N inside map M, N, the simplicial uh, sub subset whose N simplices are maps n times delta n into n such that for every t in this topological n simplex is, is an embedding. Is a, sorry, is a smooth embedding. So, uh, so points of M and N are embeddings and paths are isotopies. Uh, this, probably this example is more meaningful if you've seen some differential topology, but hopefully most people here know what an isotopy is. If not, it's literally the definition I just wrote. And it's less obvious. So for in the smooth category, this is still seeing of something, but it's hard, but it's very hard to define. In fact, I don't think I've ever read the complete proof of this fact that there is a topology on the set of embeddings for which paths are isotopies. It's called, I think, the Whitehead topology. Um, but it's, honestly, I don't remember the, the details. It's very complicated. Uh, but uh, what it boils down to, this is very easy to define, this, this can complex instead. Oh, I didn't say it. this is still a can complex. But OK, let me say it later. But in the PL, category, if you work with PL manifolds, it's not known if this is sing of something. And that's very interesting because when you do smoothing theory, you want to talk about the homotopy type of the space of embeddings. But you don't have a space of embeddings as a topological space. And that sounds like a, a deal breaker, but it's not because you have a can complex of embeddings and they just define it and you can define it in like two lines and everything is perfectly well defined and it behaves as you want. So this is very powerful. These are very powerful tools. Um, and okay, yeah, and say, let me say M as an exercise again, again, quite easy. And M, M is a can complex. So in particular, when I will define the homotopy groups, we will, we will be able to talk about the homotopy groups of the space of embeddings, and you won't have to be bothered defining crazy topologies if they even exist to talk about these homotopy groups. So this is an actual issue that you can solve with simplicial sets, uh, an issue that in, in, in smoothing theory, so in, uh, in, in a part of differential topology that actually asks you the question, oh, if I have a topological manifold, can I make it smooth? The answer is no in general, by the way. But you attack it by studying these spaces, the homotopy type of these spaces. So, okay. Um, are there questions? 
Yeah, I have a small question. Is there an easy example of a Khan complex where you can directly see that it's not the thing of some topological space? In some sense, no. In fact, I'm going to show you next lecture that every Khan complex is homotopy equivalent to the thing of some topological space. And but you might want to ask: Is it literally the thing of topological space? Uh, so. I think, yeah, there are such objects. You just need to find. Okay, but now I don't know of any easy example, but they, they do exist. Can complexes are both literally more general, but also not really because up to homotopy, which is all we are going to care about, there's not really going to be difference. In fact, that's going to be the main theorem uh, of next lecture. I don't know if that was a satisfactory answer. Uh, but um, on some level, what I would like to say is that not a question you should ask. <laughs> uh, you, you, you really should be happy to, with can complexes and uh, somehow uh, and somehow not don't worry too much if they come from topological spaces or not on some level. Yeah, I, I realized this may not be a very satisfactory. <laughs> yeah, I was just asking because I, I was a little confused because you said that you can write down this Kahn complex of embeddings, but there's no known construction of a topological space. And well, I mean, the point is that if you have a Kahn complex, you know what the underlying set of the topological space has to be. It's just a set of zero simplices. And the question becomes: Is there a topology on this set? that makes this, uh, this the thing of that set, of the topological space. And that's not known. I mean, it is that precisely the precise thing is there is no good notion of a topology on the space of PL embeddings, on the set of PL embeddings, sorry, of the space. Uh, but I'm not an expert of these details, so I can try to hunt it down the precise status of this question in the literature if you want. Um, But I just wanted to, 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 to put it as a slogan of you know, a construction that's very easy to make with simplicial sets and that's very hard, even unknown, how to do it with topological spaces. That was, I guess, the point. OK. Uh, I have 10 minutes. I think I can give you the definition of homotopy groups. And then I think we can call it a day um, for today. Uh, OK. Uh, I already defined pi 0. OK, I didn't say it. OK, pi 0 is x0 modulo that equivalence relation. Uh, so let me write it down. Zero module, yes. uh, just for the sake of having it written down. And the idea is we want a similar equivalence relation on higher simplices. So I'll write the general definition and I'll explain what happens for one simplices. And hopefully that will be um, clear what it means. So we have OX zero, <sighs> keep using, sorry, S tau. And simplices are homotopic relative to the boundary if there exists uh, psi an m plus one simplex with oh uh, yeah uh, forgot if the the restriction to the boundary are the same, of course. Uh, otherwise, that wouldn't make a lot of sense. Um, and there exists an m plus one simplex with, uh, let me get it right. It's m face of psi is sigma, and it's m plus one face is tau.
and for every zero i and minus one, the other faces, you have delta i of psi is the degenerate simplex corresponding to this. So concretely, what it means for n equals one. So we have two paths, sigma and tau, and let's call x and y their boundary. Uh, and let's suppose that they have the same boundary. Psi needs to be something whose uh, second phase is sigma. So we have sigma here, and whose first phase is uh, tau and whose zero phase is this constant guy at y. So if you think of these as paths, I'm asking to have a map from delta two into my space uh, that's constant on, on, on the target. The target doesn't move, but it moves from sigma to tau. It's slightly different from the classical notion of a homotopy relative to the boundary, which would be a map from delta one times delta one but it should be clear that it is equivalent. So example, exercise actually, this is going to go in the exercise sheet actually. Uh, I've already decided uh, if X is sing Y, Sigma tau from Delta N into Y are homotopic relative to the boundary if and only if the, they are homotopic relative to the boundary of delta n to this simply to this uh, to this topological subspace in the classical sense So this notion is a generalization of the notion that we have. And uh, okay, let me just state a proposition and make a definition and I'll prove the proposition next time. So proposition uh, being equivalent, uh, sorry, homotopic relative to the boundary is an equivalence relation on uh, X N. Uh, okay, and then we can define, so X can complex Oh, sorry, if, if X is a can complex. That's why we define can complex so that this theorem is true. Uh, and X can complex, uh, X point of zero, then we take pi N of X comma X is the set of Sigma and simplices such that sigma restricted to delta n is x modulo this equivalence relation. That's the nth homotopy group. Although I haven't proven it's a group yet, but. Okay. Uh, I think I'll stop here. Are there questions? Uh, yeah, I have a I have a simple question. So, is there a non-example of a can complex? Oh yeah. Uh, sorry, I thought I gave it before, but uh, delta n is not a can complex. Oh, okay. Uh, for example, because you can go from zero to one, but not backwards from one to zero. Okay. Yeah. This in general, in general, actually, let me yeah, let me put is 
this other example because it's going to be important in I think a couple of lectures. Mm -hmm. uh, C category and C is a can complex if and only if C is a group poly. Uh, can complex are occasionally also called infinity groupoids for this reason, but this terminology will become clearer, uh, I think, in a couple of lectures when I start talking about coherent nerve and coherent diagrams and etc. Okay, thanks. Oh, and probably I should mention that for this part, I'm following mainly Kant's original paper uh, that treats of these things, but there are plenty of references. Uh, when in the notes, there will be many, many uh, red pointers to the literature, but you could also just read the notes if you don't want to, to redo my job. <laughs> the notes will probably appear I think tomorrow, perhaps, or Saturday, I'm not sure, depending on when I finish writing them. Other further questions? Okay. Again, sorry for the lack of stable homotopy theory in these uh, lectures so far. But uh, it will come. Just give me a couple of weeks, and we will start doing actual stable homotopy theory. And uh, so let's call it a day for now, and let's see you on Monday. Uh, thank you. Uh, Bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Bye.